We have learned so much over the past few decades about how human beings develop and how human beings grow. And one of the most important lessons is that most human development in terms of emotional, social and cognitive development occurs in the earliest weeks, months and years of life. And that development is powered by a deep attachment, connection and communication with parents or primary caregivers. When children are born, they almost immediately are able to respond to the facial gestures of a parent or a caregiver. In the earliest years, scientists suggest they ask up to 25 questions an hour, in the beginning by pointing and gesturing, and in, uh, later on using language. When children are born, they seek a close attachment with a parent or a caregiver for three reasons. The first one is to learn how to navigate the world. The second one is love, because love is the essence of what it means to be human. And thirdly, it is for protection. Uh, and as a species, we are more dependent on uh, parents for protection for a longer period than any other species. Yet when children feel, early, in early childhood, when children see that, attachment is not available or they're confused about the attachment because of neglect or violence or emotional distance or through dysfunctional and chaotic households they interpret that absence or confusion as a danger and it activates the stress response system often chronically for long periods of time about 60 percent of children globally approximately and also here in north macedonia uh, at some point during violent, uh, childhood are affected by some form of uh, violence, neglect or dysfunctional household behaviour. Um, and when this chronic uh, activation of the stress response system occurs, it undermines the physical, uh, cognitive, emotional and social development of the child uh, precisely at the time when, those, when, those body, when the body and brain and the systems that make it function and flourish are growing. And it has huge consequences for the individual child, for the family and for society. Because when we look at adults that have had high levels of adversity in childhood, what we see is they're much more likely to be having poor health, to be living in poverty, to be affected by crime or addiction or other social problems. But the good news is that we've also learned through early intervention, which strengthens the, the, the attachment between the parent and the child and prevents what is often an intergenerational transmission of violence and neglect from parent to child. When they uh, address that, they can break that cycle and help the child and the family to flourish and help children to grow in a much more healthy context. Indeed, the Nobel Prize winning economist James Heckman estimates that by investing in early uh, intervention through health services in the perinatal and early childhood period, we get the biggest return on public, uh, public investment because of the, um, the, the preventing the long-term costs of childhood adversity. So we hope that you join us in doing everything that we can to ensure that every child is protected from violence, neglect and adversity, and that we help our children to grow uh, and to flourish uh, and to contribute to our economic, social and democratic development as societies. Thank you.